so in, in this lecture we will discuss first the concept of the domain limit continuity and differentiability and later on we will proceed to a analytic functions and Cauchy-Riemann equation etc. So, let us first review the few concepts which are needed in the sequence. So, let S V a non empty set of complex number complex numbers non empty set of complex number and suppose Z naught be an arbitrary point in S. Then the set of those point Z such that mod Z minus Z naught is equal to say delta, where delta is some positive uh, real number and let delta greater than equal to 0 be a real number. Then this collection of the set this is denoted by basically some gamma and we call it is a circle centered at z naught and radius gamma and with radius uh, delta. So, this is the equation. Similarly, when you say the set of those point z such that z minus z naught is less than delta, then this collection we will denote the v x naught delta or sorry z naught delta with the ball centered at z naught with the radius delta and it is going to open disk. It is called the open disk centered at z naught and with the radius delta ok with the radius delta. Then close disk the set of those z where z minus z naught is less than equal to delta this we denoted by say v z naught delta where it is the closed disk centered at z naught and radius delta. So, these are then analysis we mean the set of those points the set of those complex number z such that r 1 less than mod z minus z naught less than r 2. This collection of all such point z centered at z naught which lies between the two concentric circles this is one circle centered at z naught with a radius say r 1 here we have another circle which center gen, same center z naught and radius r 2. So, these are two concentric circle then set of those points which lies in between these two circles is known as the analysis. Analysis and if these are open means the boundary is not enclosed then we call it is a open end otherwise when the boundary is there then r 1 less than equal to z minus z naught less than equal to r 2 then this will called a closed envelope a closed analysis closed and analysis ok. Now, the delta neighborhood of uh, this is defined as which is equal now delta neighborhood of a point z naught. The delta neighborhood of the point z naught we denote this by n z naught delta. n is the collection of those complex number z such that mod z minus z naught is less than delta. It means we are taking all such point inside a ball centered at z naught with a radius delta then this collection of such point we call it as a neighborhood or delta neighborhood of the point n. The interior point we 
we mean of a set means a point j naught a point z naught is an interior point is an interior point of the set S of the set S if all if all the points in some delta neighborhood in some delta neighborhood of z naught are in s or in other words we say that is there exists some neighborhood of z naught which is totally contained which is totally contained inside S. So, this is our S a point J naught is set to be an interior point of this set. If we are able to get one neighborhood around a point J naught with a positive radius say delta, however small this delta may be. But there exists some delta greater than 0 at least one delta we can find such that all the points inside this neighborhood are the point of S that is this neighborhood this neighborhood is totally lies inside S then we point say Z naught is a interior point. And collection of all such interior points open set what is the open set is a set is set to be an open a set is set to be an open set if every point of it every point of it is an interior point every point of it is an interior point. So, obviously, the exterior point we define as the set of those points the set of those point which are not the interior point or you can say a point z naught is an exterior point is an exterior point of a of the set s if all the points all the points in some neighborhood of z naught some delta neighborhood of z naught are outside of s so suppose this is a point here and if we are able to get one neighborhood around the point this which does not contain any point of S then we say this point is an exterior point of S. So, like boundary point a point z is a boundary point is a boundary point of S if every delta neighborhood of Z contains at least one point of S and as well as and 
at least one point of its complement complements that is not in S. So, a boundary point is the point here this point will be a boundary point because if I draw any neighborhood around this point then it will contain both the point of S as well as point outside of it that is at least one point is available here which is inside S and other point which is outside it. So, such a point is said to be a boundary point. Okay. <laughs> now, close set is a set is closed a set S is said to be a closed set if every boundary point of S point of S belongs to it means if it contains all its boundary point then all complement of the open sets we also call it a closed sets. Okay. sets closed. So, a set is said to be closed when it is uh, a boundary point all the boundary points are in the set. The boundary set an open set is, is said to be bounded bounded if there exists some positive general number m real number m such that all the points of the sets is less than or equal to m in absolute value that mod of z is less than or equal to m for all z belongs to s. If we are unable to get such m then set is said to be unbounded if no such m is possible then set s is said to be unbounded. means we are unable to get such an m for which this condition holds for all z then such a set is said to be a unbounded set. Then connected set an open set S is said to be connected. set to be connected if any two points z 1 and z 2 any two points z 1 and z 2 of S can be joined can be joined by means of a polygonal line which 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 is totally contained inside S the meaning is this <coughs> suppose we have this set this is our set S. We said this set is connected because if we pick up two points z1 and z2, suppose any arbitrary two point, then if I join this z1, z2 by the straight line directly, then entire line does not belongs to it because there is a gap, there is a portion which lies outside of it. However, 
one can draw the polygonal lines like this. A polygonal curve means we are going from z 1 to here and then this. So, entire polygonal line lies totally inside this then such a set is said to be a, a connected set. If we take this say suppose uh, I consider circle which is also a connected set because we take any arbitrary two point one can always find the zigzag position which is totally kind of like or maybe a straight line also one can go for it, but there may be a set which are not connected set. For example, suppose I take collection of these sets set of all point S which belongs to this as well as this union of this. Now, this set S is the union of these two suppose okay. then this set will not be a connected set because as soon as you pick up any arbitrary point here or any point here you are not able to get any polygonal curve which can join connect these two point without leaving the set S. So, such a set is a disconnected set. Okay. These are the connected set. Okay. So, this meaning of this. Now, domain we define now. Domain. An open connected set. an open connected set is called a domain. So, domain is not simply a set, what it should be an open connected set that is a collection of the points is set to be a domain when it is an open set that every point is an interior point and connected means if any two arbitrary point we picked up from the set then one can be able to draw a polygonal curve joining these two point which is totally concerned inside. Okay. And region a region is a domain together with all or maybe some or maybe none of its boundary point so when the domain is combined with the elements of the boundary either all or maybe some or maybe none then this collection will call it the region. Now, for example, if we take this suppose I say real part of z is greater than 0, then real part of z is greater than 0 means x basically real part if z is x plus i y then real part of z is x, x is positive. So, this is our complex plane this is x axis this one is the y axis. Now, we want x to be greater than 0. So, the all the points which are falling here this will be the collection of this point will give the set real part of z is greater than 0. Now, obviously, this set is an open set because the boundary is not included and second one is also connected one can join any two point. So, it is a domain example of the it is a open connected set. However, if we take suppose another example the set of those point where the real part of z is not equal to 0. Then in that case real part of z is not equal to 0 means the x should not be 0 that is the set of all point x plus i y where the x should be different from 0. So, that is only possibility when you remove completely the imaginary line. If I remove this part, this is deleted, delete this part, imaginary line that is by axis. 
if I denote completely by x is then set of all points which are here as well as which are here except this line except this line this is deleted. Okay. So, this forms a set is this connected set no it is not connected because if we picked up here or if we picked up one point here and one point here then in order to connect these two points, you have to cross this line, but this line is not uh, permitted because the x should not be 0 because at this point x becomes 0. So, this set is not connected. Then will it be a region? Yes, it is a region because it will uh, 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 region is a domain. So, it is not a domain at all, it is not an open connected set, but it is the collection of the points only that is all. So, it is an open unbounded it you can say it is an open it is an open set unbounded not connected set that is all. And since it is not connected so it is not a domain not a domain it is not a domain where this one is the it is an open connected set. Now, if we take this another example says C, suppose I take the set of those point Z, we are 0 less than argument of Z less than pi by 4. What if this is the Argument of z is 0 means this x axis. Argument of z is pi by 4, so this is angle pi by 4. We are taking those points which are lying between 0 and pi by 4. So, basically, this is the same as this set of all x plus i y, where argument z is 10 inverse by over x. So, 10 inverse 0 is 0, so we can get 0 less than equal to less than by less than x this is the set. So, this value by is equal to x is this line because pi by 4 pi by 4 this is the pi by 4 and by is equal to x this line. So, we are getting only these points by this line these two line are not added this is line is drop this is line is also out. So, this set is a connected set it is an open set. So, it will be a domain okay, that will be domain. Now, let us come to the functions. Of a complex variable. Z functions of a complex value z. So, let S is a set of complex numbers z. S is the set of all complex numbers z. A function f defined on S is a rule is a rule that assigns that assigns to every point z in S a complex number f of z. Okay. We denote this is denote it as w equal to f z w equal to f z and z is a complex number z is a x plus i y then this mapping will also be complex number and we say it is u plus i b 
u x y plus i time b x y. So, if we have this z plane, here we have a w plane, this is x axis, this is y axis, this is real axis, this is imaginary, here is u axis, this is v axis. Then take any point here, say small j, under this a function f is sin, f is a rule which is sign the point z of capital S, this is our capital S, a set of point on which the function is well defined, then find the value of z under f, then this f will give a point f of z in the w plane okay? and this will be a complex quantity. Okay? For example, suppose I take f z is equal to say z square plus 3 z this is our problem. Then z is x plus i y. So, if I substitute z equal to x plus i y and just open it, then what happens? W which is f z, this is equal to x plus i y whole square plus 3 x plus i y. So, separate out the real and imaginary parts. So, we are getting from here is that x square then minus uh, plus i square by square means minus y square plus 3 x is it not? This will be u plus i v i v will be equal to uh, x square minus i plus 2 x by. So, 2 x by i times then plus 3 by this. So, basically this comes out to be u as a function of x by and plus v as a function of x by. So, this gives you a function. The domain of definition of the function f is the same as we define in case of real that the set of those points where the function is well defined is said to be the domain of definitions. Okay. So, here we will take. Now, in case of this real, we are looking for the single variable case, single valued functions only. But in case of complex, we get a multi valued function. Uh, functions multi valued function. So, we divide in the single valued and multi valued function. So, what are the single valued function? Multi valued functions. If for every if for every z belonging to the domain of f, d f I am writing domain of f or s, we are the domain, there exist an unique image in the w plane. in the w plane, then the function f z f z is called is said to be is said to be single valued function. function. Otherwise, multiple and if for z belongs to the domain f, we get more than one images. One images in the w plane, then we then function f z is said to be. Is said to be multi valued function. Valued function. For example, f z is equal to say 3 z plus 1. This is a single valued function. Corresponding to each z, we get only one image. However, if we take the function f z 
a z raised to the power half, then for each z we have the two images. So, it is a multi valued function. Valued function okay. So, this will be examples we will see later on those let me finish first. Then we introduce the concept of limits. The limit of a function of complex variables. Variable. So, let us see how to define the limit. Let f z be a single valued function, single valued function of z of a complex point z defined on the set S, which includes which includes the delta neighborhood of a point of a point say z equal to z naught of a point z equal to z naught. Okay. Now, we say z naught, then the function the function f z is said to have a limit limit say l which is also a point uh, in a complex number which complex number l as z approaches to z naught as z approaches to z naught if for given for a given positive number f sin r greater than 0, however small may be, there exist if for a given area there exist for a given f sin r greater than 0, there exist a real number delta depends on f sin r greater than 0 such that modulus of f z minus l less than f sin r whenever whenever 0 less than mod z minus z naught less than delta, where l is finite limit finite we are and we write this and we write it this as limit of the function f z when z tends to z naught is l, where l is finite. Okay. Now, here if you look we have taken the deleted neighborhood of z naught. So, here in case of the limit when we say the function f z has a limit at z tends to z naught exist, then it is not necessary the function has to be defined at z naught. So, notice and the function f z need not be defined at the point z naught. Still you can say the function f z has a limit l. Now, if this limit does not exist, now if no such l is possible, then we say the function does not have a limit. If no such l, if no such L which is in C exist, then we say that the function f z then the function f z has no limit. So, basically this uh, concept of the limit depends on the path of where the point is going. When we say this is our z space z plane 
here is w plane. So, suppose I take z not here and I take any arbitrary point z in the neighborhood of z naught. So, that it z may approach to z naught in any way either this way or this way or maybe some it is because it is in the neighborhood. Then corresponding images f of z if it goes to l in whatever the path you choose whatever the path you choose if all the path is the function f z tends to l then only we say limit of the function f z when z approaches to z not exist. If there exists at least one path where the limit differs from the another path then limit will not exist. So, here this is something more complicated than the limit of a function of single variable a real variable because in case of the real we picked up the limit only either from the left hand side or from the right hand side and then we say the limit of the f x when x tends to x naught is exist. But in this case in all this sort of direction the lim approach uh, path may be possible you can choose any path which can approach the point z naught from any direction in fact inside the circular disk centered at z naught with a suitable radius at delta. So, here while looking the limit you should be careful that the limit from all the path should exist, but since there are infinite many paths. So, how will you test the all the path and find the calculate. So, in order to avoid this thing we use the epsilon or delta definition to confirm whether the limit exists or not. If this condition is satisfied then it will give the guarantee that whatever the path you choose it the limit will always exist. Okay. Let us see the example. For example, let us say the function say using epsilon or delta definition so that the limit of this function z square minus z as z tends to minus i is i minus 1. Okay. <laughs> so, let us apply epsilon delta definition. What the epsilon delta definition says that for a given epsilon, epsilon is known. We have to identify a delta which satisfy this condition. So, let epsilon is greater than 0 is given. this is given. Okay. We want to find delta which should depend on epsilon positive rest such that this condition must hold f z minus f z minus l that is f z is what z square minus z minus i minus 1 this is l should less than epsilon provided or whenever this z 0 less than z minus z naught z minus z naught means uh, z this is the point tends to i z naught is minus i. So, z minus z naught means this z plus i is less than delta. So, we have to identify delta how to start with this consider thus this part mod z square minus z minus i minus 1 consider this. Okay. Now, this will be equal to z square plus 1 and minus z plus i. Now, this is the same as z plus i because z square plus 1 can be z plus i z minus i. So, z minus i minus 1 is it not this mod. So, this is less than equal to mod of z plus i into mod of z minus i minus 1, but mod minus i minus because we want i again. So, plus i if I choose then it becomes minus i minus 2 i that will satisfy this condition. Now, this mod z plus i is again less than equal to. So, z plus i and this will be equal to less than equal to mod z plus i and plus mod 1 plus 2 i. Just apply the mod z 1 plus z 2 as mod z 1 plus mod z 2. 
Now, this is equal to mod z plus i and then within bracket mod z plus i and what is this square root of this. So, under root of 5. Okay. Now, suppose for a given epsilon we are able to get delta then we want mod z plus i should be less than delta. So, here we say write that this portion this part is nothing but right hand side of this right hand side of this part this. So, it is less than or equal to if we choose if we choose this z plus delta i z plus i mod mod z plus i plus root 5 which is basically less than or equal to delta into delta plus root 5. If I take this to be less than epsilon then entire thing is uh, satisfied that for this less than delta we are getting the difference is less than epsilon. So, what, what is this? If I solve this equation and when you get you will find the delta will come out to be less than under root epsilon plus 5 by 4 minus under root 5 by 2. Why? Because just a quadratic equation j delta square plus root 5 delta is less than epsilon. Make the perfect square by adding this term epsilon 5 by 4 or square and so on and then subtract it we get this one. Okay. So, delta it means for a given epsilon greater than 0 you have got the delta which is less than this value. So, if I choose this as a delta which depends on epsilon then whole things is come. So, this proves the so. So, for given epsilon greater than we choose delta to be this number less than under root of this part this number okay. then set it. So, continue uh, limit exist limit is i minus 1. Okay. So, this is the way uh, please check it okay. this is the way we can do it okay. limit i minus 1 is this okay please check it again yes but if it is asked whether this limit exists or not or so that so that limit of this real part of z minus imaginary part of z whole square divide by mod z square z tends to 0. So, that limit does not exist. Now, here we need not to go for epsilon delta we have to simply identify the path such that two paths along two different path limit differs. So, what are the paths now? <coughs> we wanted limit when z approaches to 0 from 0. Okay. So, I can choose any path suppose I take a point z I take the first path this one. So, case 1 first path is when it goes down that is y tends to 0 x tends to 0 later on. Second case I can choose the path like this this is our second case this is second case this is first path this is second path second path is say x is tending to 0 y tends to 0 and third path may be any line any curve you can say or line y is equal to m x y is equal to m x. So, I have taken this there may be other path also, but if this three path if I choose suppose and in all three the uh, between any two path the limit does not uh, differs then we say it is a limit does not exist. Okay. So, let us take this one what is the function function f z is uh, the function f z is real part of z minus imaginary part of z whole square divide by mod z square that is the function is real part of z is x imaginary part of z is y 
by x square plus y square this is our function. So, we are interested in finding the limit. So, in the first case what is the limit of this function limit when z approach to 0 first y tends to 0. So, when y is tending to 0 then what you get x square by x square limit comes out to be 1 you see here. Okay. In the second case when x is 0 this is 0 this is 0 and again the limit comes out to be 1. So, along these two path limit is coming to be 1, but what about the third path? Third path the limit of the function f z when z approach to 0 this is the same as the limit substitute by equal to m x. So, when z tends to 0 means if I take x tends to 0 by tends to 0. So, here substitute let x z tends to 0 putting y equal to m x. So, what we get x minus m x whole square divide by x square m x square and from here we get x square is cancelling we get 1 minus m whole square over 1 plus m square. So, limit of this is coming to be this, but it depends on n depends on m. So, it means if I change the slope of this line if I change the slope of this line say this line then the limit along this line and this line differs because it depends on m therefore, limit varies along various path. So, limit does not exist. So, limit does not exist. Limit varies along different path therefore, limit does not exist does not exist. Okay. So, that is what is this clear? Now, let us come to the continuity a definition of the continuity. Continuity a function f z let f z be a single valued function single valued function of z defined in some neighborhood of z not neighborhood z not including the point point z not here that in case of continuity which is must the function must be defined at the point z not then function f z is said to be continuous at a point z equal to z naught if for given epsilon greater than 0 however small may be we can find a delta a real number delta greater than 0 which depends on epsilon as well as the point depends on epsilon as the point such that the mod of f z minus f z naught less than f sin r whenever mod of z minus z naught less than delta. That is the meaning is this when f is continuous f z is continuous at a point z equal to z naught means limit of this function f z when z tends to z naught exist and equal to the value of the function f z naught. So, in case of the continuity three points is very important first is the function must be defined at the point z naught second is the limit of the function f z must exist and third is both should be identical. Now, if any one of the condition fails the limit function will not be continuous at the point z naught. So, what are the possibilities for the continuity this one. Uh, okay. So, if anyone else, so we get for continuity three things are essential. Continuity number one, the function f z is to be defined is well defined at the point z naught. Second is limit of the function f z 
when z approaches to z naught must exist and third is both should be equal and third part is that both should be equal limit third is the condition a is satisfied third is limit f z must be equal to f z naught when z tends to z naught. So, third condition. So, if suppose first two set satisfied, but the third does not satisfy then the point is set to be a removable discontinuity point. For example, if we take the function sin z by z and suppose I take the function f z sin z by z when z is not equal to 0 and 0 if z is 0. Then the limit of this function f z when z tends to 0. Okay. Now, if I take limit of this function when sin z by z when z tends to 0 what will be the limit? This is cos z and this is 1 is it not? but it differs from the value of the function at the point 0. So, the function has a discontinuity at 0, but this is known as the removable discontinuity. Why removable? Because we can we can redefine the function function h capital F z equal to small f z when z is not equal to 0 and equal to 1 if z equal to 0, then this function becomes continuous and that is why. Now, another results also note if the function f is continuous is continuous at a point z naught which is x naught plus i by naught, then it is real and imaginary part then it is real and imaginary part parts will also be continuous, will also be continuous okay? and that is all. Thank you very much. Thanks.